to the forecast now a live look over campus marshes. It was getting awfully breezy on the way into work today. Glenda, yeah, my yeah. goodness. Oh yeah, and you could feel that moisture in the air. No surprise that the skies have been churning, Dave. Absolutely, and around here, not nearly as much as up north. I just wanted to show you again at 350. This is what the radar looked like as the tornado touched down on the north side of Gaylord. So this is Livingston. This is I-75 and Gaylord is here at the bottom of your screen. That's the tornado and it worked its way from west to east through that area. Widening out, we'll run it a couple more times for you again. This is about where it goes through Gaylord and then it works its way off to the northeast. Now it's out over the lake. If you watch carefully, you'll see a line here, another line back to the northwest, but then watch the storm itself turn to the right and kind of go off by itself. It was a supercell storm, started out as part of a line, turned right. That's a good indicator lots of times of extra instability, extra development, and that's exactly what happened with that storm. We'll keep you updated. Uh, there's a lot going on up there in Gaylord with damage. Uh, and, but again, a confirmed tornado there and to the east of Gaylord as well. That same line works its way down across the lake. Just starting to see a little development here south of Milwaukee by Kenosha. What will happen is slowly, slowly, slowly that will march toward us. But I think we've got a lot of the evening and even some of the overnight hours that will be dry. So the highest risk of a tornado and damaging wind and larger hail certainly is in the northern part of the state. Saginaw Valley tip of the thumb and north. That's where it's been so far. We have this marginal risk risk, very slight risk. It's still a possibility, just not nearly as uh, often or concerning as what's going on up to the north. And then tomorrow it's still here on top of us as well. And then the more risk slides a little farther southeast toward uh, Toledo and toward uh, Cleveland as well. So watch on Futurecast now. This is one of what we call our high resolution models. It looks real close at what's going on. And this is four o'clock in the morning, just starting to see some action in Sanilac over here in Livingston County. So much of the night could remain dry. The concern is if we get something to spark, which is not very likely, but if we do, then it could be a pretty big deal with wind, hail, and uh, some very, very heavy rain. This is 9.30 or so in the morning on Saturday. So the threats are wind first, hail second, flooding third, tornado can't be completely ruled out this evening and overnight especially, but it is not very likely at all around here for that. And then on Saturday, it becomes more of a heavy rain, gusty wind kind of a thing. Not out of the question to have a wind that's a little too strong or some hail, uh, but it's a little different animal, so to speak here. And I think we'll get more rain Saturday uh, than we will tonight. We'll get more rain late Saturday and Saturday evening than we will in the morning, even though there can be some action in the morning as well. These temperatures have dew points next to them. If you know dew points at the ultimate measure of moisture, the higher they are, the muggier it is outside. So 87 in Detroit with a dew point of 64 feels like 88. So the heat index starting to be an issue. We got to 87 for a high today, not 90, but it does feel like 90 right now in Lansing. So overnight tonight, low to mid 60s with 67 in Detroit, a very slightly increasing chance for showers and thunderstorms, especially after two or three o'clock in the morning. And then tomorrow, periods of storms don't have to be severe, but not out of the question that one or two could be, especially around Detroit and to the south. Temperatures in the 70s, 60s on Sunday. I hate to tell you this, Sunday still does not look like a great day. Mostly cloudy with showers, maybe a clap of thunder. The best chance for thunder is probably in the morning there. And then when you go back to work, it's nice on Monday. Oh, just in time. Thank you, Dave.